And welcome to Car Time Radio. Dan Watson sitting in today for Jay Zumbauer. And there's, I'm sure some of you have heard me here before, sitting in for Jay. And I'll just remind you that I am a certified lubrication specialist, not an ASE certified mechanic. So what that means is we'll talk some about lubrication, filtration, fuels, transmission fluid, anything in that area to lubricate your vehicle or talk about the effects of different kinds of fuels and fuel additives and so forth. But we'll stay away from those mechanical questions because that would just be kind of an act of futility, working, trying to answer those questions for you. We'd be going around in circles. Now, to call in and ask a question or contribute, I hope, contribute to the conversation, it's 407-674-1025 or toll-free 855-545-1025. And I'm going to be talking to you today some about the whole sort of field of the synthetic versus petroleum and why use it and is it too expensive or is it affordable and why does it make any difference? And the reason I'm entering this subject field is because in the week in my business, I just can't believe that I've run into some major questions in this area by actually um, some of my fleet customers, which really surprised me that they would be Uh, in this discussion again, and so I want to reemphasize it and let everybody know the facts on what's going on in the lubrication world and where we stand on synthetic and petroleum oils. And I think it's, it's a very important thing for consumers to have some fundamental idea of because uh, you're the guys and gals that put the, that require certain oils put in your car and you agree to have it done. So, If you think about this, you're the only one that can make the right decisions. You're going to get an awful lot of advice and a lot of people telling you uh, that song that leads into the show just sort of reminds me of how it is out there with everybody telling you what you need and it'll only be $800, okay? So, you know, let's hope that we can cut through some of that smoke and you can have a better idea of what it is that works best in your car. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take this phone call because that's the purpose, is to answer questions. So, John, what's your question for me today? I have a 2006 Ford Super Duty, uh, and I, I'm pulling a 26-foot boat. It's an F-250 with the 6.0 diesel. Okay. And I wanted to change. I've got about 130,000 miles on it, and I wanted to change the transmission fluid and filter and go to the uh, AMSOIL's full synthetic. And I went up to get that uh, from a local place down here that has AMSOIL, and they said, you need to check before you do it with that many miles on it. So I heard your show today, and I said, let me check. Well, it is an excellent question because there are times when it is best (laughs) to leave a transmission alone. Now, when you pull the dipstick on your transmission, there's a couple of things you're going to be able to do. One is when you look at the fluid, you're going to be able to tell whether it looks either uh, light amber or even red, or if it's turned brown, and if you were to literally stick it up close to your face, it would have an off odor to it does it have either an off odor or has it turned dark brown no it's it's still a a, a pinkish red color all right that's good when you still have pink in the transmission fluid there's a 99 percent chance that the fluid is functioning well and is not what we would call burnt transmission fluid Mm -hmm. when that transmission fluid gets over ranged Uh, and it can't take the temperature, it will begin to turn literally uh, a tan color. And it will have a smell to it, which is hard to describe, but easy to recognize when you smell it because it just sort of stinks with a burnt plastic smell, if that makes any sense. Uh Uh-huh, okay. And so when you have uh, the conditions you have, there's only one other aspect 
that you have to look for when you change the transmission fluid. You're going to have people tell you, well, just bring it into a place and let them do an exchange. In other words, uh, push in new transmission fluid, purge out the old, and you're good to go. I tell you not to do that with the miles you have because you want to change the internal filter and you want to see the transmission oil pan. You want to see what it looks like. So you got to take it off right. to do that. You can't just flush right. stuff through it, okay? Because if you open the transmission up by dropping the pan and you look in the pan and it's really clean, again, that's a good sign, not a thing to worry about. Now, if you look in the pan and there's anywhere as much as a an eighth of an inch, you even sometimes in these things find a quarter of an inch, of a pasty-looking, waxy sub substance, that's trouble. That means uh -huh. that the fluid broke down a long time ago, and this is the oxidized fluid uh, ending up in the bottom of the transmission pan. Uh, you don't yeah. normally see that unless you see brown transmission fluid. So I don't think you're going to find that. But it's important enough to change that internal filter that when you change it, you inspect that pan and, and see what it looks like. Now, if you have a shop that's going to do that for you, you just talk to them about that and say, hey, I'm I'm interested to make sure that I don't have a lot of gunk in the bottom of this pan because that's really going to worry me if I do. Okay, so you have them look for that, change the internal filter, and then they can put that pan back up and actually uh, do their uh, fill and purge after they've changed it. Most don't want to do that. They just want to exchange the fluid and not change that because that takes time and effort. You know, there must be 35, 40 of those little tiny eighth-inch bolts holding that pan on the bottom of the transmission. Right. But it is important to do that, and then I don't see any problem you're going to have. And, and uh, what I do see is that anytime you work a transmission hard in this climate in particular, you do yourself and the transmission a favor by using a good quality synthetic transmission fluid because you can take, for example, an, an Amsoil ATF uh, and you can run it at, uh, I don't know, 320 degrees uh, all day long and you won't hurt it. If you run regular transmission fluid at 300 degrees and you say, well, 300 degrees is really hot, well, when you look at towing with these things, if you put a transmission temperature gauge on it, you might be surprised to see it busting past 250 without much trouble because the heavier it gets loaded and the more work it does, the more temperature is created right. in the transmission. So the idea is, is to have all the safety margin that you can have. And when you read the regular petroleum Mercon charts, they tell you that if your transmission oil runs at 205 degrees, you have to change it every 15,000 miles. That's their chart, not mine. That's Mercon telling you with their fluid that's what you'd have to do. Now, in a lot of cases, you got uh, a truck there that's got so much power. That that diesel engine in there has got probably six, over 600 foot-pounds of torque, and right. so it's not impressed by that boat it would just jerk it around without any trouble, but it does it through the transmission. So it, it transfers all of that incredible torque and power through the transmission, and that transmission is actually the most heavily worked thing in the truck. So I think you're doing the right thing, but uh, as long as you take a look at it and make sure that you don't see any signs of uh, excessive uh, breakdown of the fluid, hey, you're going to be just fine shifting it over and it's going to actually provide uh, long-term better protection uh, simply because the synthetic transmission fluids can take the heat that the regular. Now, you don't, and believe it or not, you don't even have regular petroleum in there. You've got a bit of a blend because that's the only way they can make the transmission fluid you have in there even stand up to the load it's under now is they've got a certain amount of synthetic yeah, already mixed in it. Somebody told me that that the stock fluid was a semi-synthetic yeah. in those Ford transmissions from the factory. Yeah, they just they couldn't get a standard transmission fluid that could actually handle the severe load that that, uh, that power stroke can put on that transmission. So they had to upgrade to a semi-synthetic just to get past it. And I always say this when it comes to any of these blends or semi-synthetic type things is that it's kind of like being partly pregnant. 
It has yeah. no it, no meaning. It doesn't, you know, it helps a little with the temperature, but that's it. If I'm going to spend the money and I'm going to go for a better product and I realize that the synthetic portion of that blend is what makes it better, then why don't I just go on to the synthetic and forget having any petroleum in it? What is the idea here of reducing the effectiveness of my fluid by keeping any petroleum in it? Right. Is there, in AMSOIL, what is the 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 best synthetic for that transmission? Well, a 2007 on a 6-liter, uh, I will just tell you this. If it says in, in your book, if it says Mercon LV, then you need to use the AMSOIL ATL. That is what we call the fuel-efficient low viscosity because LV stands for low viscosity, Mercon low viscosity. It's a lighter weight fluid. Now, they made the transmission to work on that, and so it has an effect upon shifting and several other things. So you should stick with that level of viscosity if it says LV. Now, if it says just Mercon and it doesn't say LV, then Amsoil ATF, the next fluid up, it's a little thicker, but you need to stick with what they recommend for those transmissions as far as viscosity levels. So if it says Mercon LV, it's the Amsoil ATL. If it's Mercon and doesn't have the LV after it, then it's the ATF, the regular multi-vehicle ATF. Well, I sure appreciate that. Thank you. You've been a lot of help. Well, that's a strong truck, so, you know, <laughs> keep it on the road. That's a powerful machine. So, all right. Well, we're right up against a break. The producer is going to throw th- something through at me because we're running overtime. So we're going to take a break, and we'll come back right after these minutes. And welcome back to Car Time Radio. Dan Watson sitting in for Jay Zimbauer today. Great question about uh, transmission fluid in a Ford Power Stroke in the first segment. And if you've got a question, 407-674-1025 or toll-free, 855-545-1025. Now, let me tell you a minute about I was – in the first segment, I mentioned that uh, somehow this week I got into the discussion about synthetic and petroleum again, and I thought these things had been settled, I don't know, 15 years ago when uh, a lot of this stuff was really hot and heavy around the late 90s. Uh, there was a lot of questions about this, and I thought that issue had kind of settled, and there wasn't a question anymore that people would actually ask about whether synthetic was uh, superior to petroleum, but only uh, cost factors would come into play. And so let me start out by saying, uh, look at the manufacturers of automobiles. What are they doing, okay? Toyota's been about five years, bumper-to-bumper, synthetic requirement in their cars from the factory. Uh, BMW, factory-loaded synthetic. Mercedes, factory-loaded synthetic. Uh, Chevy in uh, a few different models, and uh, specifically the Corvette, factory-loaded synthetic. Uh, Dodge has come out with these very high-performance cars. they got some 0W40 synthetic. Uh, Mustang, high-performance 5W50 synthetic. Um, Transmission fluids. The... Dexron 6 and the Mercon LV are partial synthetics. I think they should go all the way. Uh, If you go over to uh, BMW, they have synthetic transmission fluids. If you go to Honda, Honda uh, has announced, and they're already in Japan, that they're going to be producing cars with 0W16 oil. Uh, I'm telling you, that's full synthetic. You can't make a 0W16 in petroleum. It'll just blow away and be smoke. So... All of these manufacturers must know something, that they're going to synthetic engine oils. And it it's simple. Uh, every test that you can run for performance on these lubricants, synthetic oils, will outperform petroleum. It's just simple. I mean, you know, chemistry and physics, they, it just works out that way. You can't change it. It's... It's the laws of nature that we work with. So when you say, when I say that you should use synthetic and, and customers say, well, why? And, 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 you know, the main reason that you will see synthetic be call, called out for is temperature range. 
synthetic engine oils, uh, some of the ones like a, a 0W20 or 0W30 that come from AMS oil, my goodness, they have a pore point of minus 68 degrees. They have a, a high temperature flash point limit of 460 degrees. Uh, that's a temperature range that on the one end at minus 68 degrees or minus 63 degrees, if my memory serves me right, uh, petroleum would be ice crystals and it would look like cotton candy, okay? Uh, on the top end, it would already be smoke and be gone or be on fire and burning away down the road at, at 460 degrees. So it's not even a question of the extremes you can do. It is well known. That's the reason why every aircraft you see flying on, every one that you fly on, all those combustion turbines use nothing but high-performance, high-temperature synthetic oils. That's all they use because when you're at 30,000, 35, 39,000 feet, the inlet temperature is minus 50 degrees coming into the front end of the engine. But on the exhaust, it's blowing out at 400 degrees. So they only have one oil system, and the same oil that treats the front intake bearing treats the aft exhaust bearing. It's the same oil. Now, that's not the same oil you're going to put in your car because it's a higher temperature ester-based type synthetic. But it proves the point of why you use synthetic oils. It's to handle severe conditions. Now, in your car... Do you really have severe conditions? Well, when we were all running around in the late 60s and early 70s with 40-weight oil in our car and the thermostat was set to 165 degrees, boy, we had so much margin, we didn't have to worry about much of nothing. So they made 40-weight oils that were, well, they are pretty good lubricating things, but to tell you the truth, they were not very high quality because they didn't have to be. There was no severe duty. So what have we done since then? The government, through the Environmental Protection Agency, has required better and better emission controls. Okay, fine. I'm not against uh, any kind of pollution control. Let's clean the air up. But in order to do that, the engineers and the car manufacturers have continued to raise the thermostat temperatures of the cars to get better fuel burn, better fuel economy. And so you end up now running 205-degree thermostats instead of 165, and pushing ever harder for better fuel economy and uh, better performance, we have made those oils thinner. We're now talking about 0W20, 5W20, not 10W40, and not 50 weight, 20W50. So I am making the engine hotter, and I'm making the oil thinner. That is not exactly a formula for success in lubrication. So how do I get around this? Well, I'm not going to lower the temperature. I can tell you that, the, you, not unless you want to get arrested. The EPA is not interested in our opinion of whether that temperature is too high. It's going to stay high, and it's going to be efficient. And we're going to go to lighter weight oils because we're going to be pushed more and more for higher fuel economy. And you can go from a 50-weight oil to a 20-weight oil and have a 10% fuel economy increase. That's how much difference it makes from 50 to 20. So the days of 50-weight oil, gone. It's not going to happen, okay? So we're in this quandary. How can I accomplish this? Well, in the lubrication world, what we have to do is go to better and better quality oil to handle this situation we find ourselves in. So 0W20 and 5W20 oils, if they are not synthetic, they are not sufficient to protect your car. It's that simple. Now. We get around that by coming out with what I call low-grade synthetics and trying to stick them in there uh, to get a little better temperature handling. Then we talk about blends. Blend is just, for, for goodness sakes, do yourself a favor. Write blend off of your, 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 your nomenclature. Don't even think about blend because the blends are so unreliable. You don't know whether they got 5% synthetic or they got 50% synthetic. You don't know, and here comes the clincher. There's no requirement for you to know. There is no stipulation, no regulation of how much you have to have. You just have to say you have some. So I have a blend. It's only 5%, but I don't have to tell you that. I just make a 5% and put it on the market, and so be it. You didn't know. You wasted your money buying a 5% synthetic blend. 
So don't even mess with it. Either use a high-grade petroleum or go straight to a full synthetic. Do not mess with blends, okay? Could you get a good blend? Yes, you could. But do you know if you do? No, you don't. So the chances of you getting a good blend are highly unlikely. What you will usually get is glorified petroleum that costs you more money. So just stay away from the blends, okay? Now we're going to take a break, and when we come back, We'll be talking some more about this synthetic and petroleum issue. And you can call me and make your comments or ask your questions at 407-674-1025. We'll be back right after these messages. Welcome back to Car Time Radio. Dan Watson sitting in today for Jay Zimba. Taking your questions, give me a call here at 407-674-1025. Now, before we went to the break, we were talking about lightweight oils and where we're headed with that and why these oils simply have to be a synthetic when you get into 0W20 and 5W20 oil. Well, let me explain it to you like this. There is, in any one of these weights of oil, 20 weight, 30 weight, 40 weight, 50 weight, there is a normal operating band. And that's the temperatures at which that oil is just, in a way of saying, is just fat, dumb, and happy. Doing a good job, not strange. Then there's what we call the intermittent range. That's a band of temperature where the oil is really outside of its comfort zone. That would be, for example, when I get a, uh, one of these petroleum oils starting to head below zero, and it's starting to crystallize wax and get thick, and it just is not working out very well. Then on the other end, when I start heading up in high temperature, I'm going to reach a point, depending upon the weight of the oil, that certain things begin to just uh, destroy it. It can't hold together. There's so much heat in it that it begins to thin out as far as its viscosity, and it becomes where it readily reacts with oxygen, and then it reaches points of which it's beginning to turn to vapor as well as liquid, and liquid lubricates, vapor doesn't. So we look at these oils, we test them, and we determine where their normal operating band is. Now, for 20-weight oil, whether 0, 20, or 520, it doesn't matter. The 20-weight is measured up at the 212-degree point. And what we find is the normal operating band for petroleum fluid of a 20-weight will run to about 240 degrees. That's the top of the normal operating band. Now, what does that mean? You say, well, my car's only got a 205 thermostat. I'm not at 240 degrees. Well, and then something that's important to know and understand is that oil temperatures run 35 to 70 degrees higher than the water temperature that you read on the gauge that comes into your dash. So if your thermostat's doing great, holding the temperature of the water to 205 degrees, that would mean that the oil's running about 240 degrees. So when we run a 20-weight oil, we are virtually, if it were pure petroleum oil, we are virtually running right on the upper limit for that oil for its normal operating band. And any time that we go into any particular circumstance, it would cause it to rise in temperature, such as sitting and idling at a traffic light with 140-degree asphalt under the car, uh, towing, uh, running at high speeds down the road, all kinds of different things. That means that oil gets hotter than that 35-degree difference, and it runs up now to 250, 260. Well, it's not going to melt down. Your car is not going to pull over to the side of the road. But what happens is, the oil begins to suffer higher oxidation rate. It doesn't have the film strength and thickness to provide the protection it's designed to do. It's suffering from viscosity loss. And it's beginning to vaporize at a pretty good rate, and that vapor is actually sucked by your PCV system into the intake of the engine, and it burns it out, and you don't see it, but you start using oil. So all of a sudden, the 20-weight oil starts disappearing and you don't know where it's going because you don't see anything leaking, and you're going, what is the problem? Well, it's burning it because it's vaporizing away and getting sucked into the PCV system. 
So now, if you move to a quality synthetic, and I use that term quality synthetic because believe me, there's so much junk hitting the, the market now to try to make more money and call itself synthetic. It's just a shame. But if you use a quality synthetic, you will move that normal operating band from 240 to about 300 degrees. And that means that you can keep that 20-weight synthetic in its fat, dumb, and happy zone through almost every maneuver you put on your engine. And that's what you need to do. You need to always be using a motor oil that stays in the fat, dumb, and happy zone and doesn't go into the screaming heebie-jeebie zone where it doesn't have any ability to control itself. That's what you need to do. And so, folks, if you own one of these new cars, that calls for 20-weight oil, and you're going to stick within your warranty requirements, you need to run somebody's synthetic 20-weight oil. Now, I would recommend that you run Amdol's Signature Series because it is the premium 20-weight, and if you're going to spend the money and you want the protection, you ought to go all the way and get the best protection. And you might say, well, you're just biased because you know about Amdol and you don't like the others. No, I'm telling you, the Amsoil Signature Series is better than the Amsoil XL and better than the Amsoil OE Series because those two oils, the XL and the OE, are closer to the other synthetics in the marketplace. The Signature Series is just all out there by itself. It's only one oil that I would tell you, in my opinion, that comes close to the Amsoil Signature Series, and that is Mobile Platinum Oil. Now, remember, I said Mobile Platinum, not Mobile One, because Mobile Platinum is the premium mobile oil recommended for up to 15,000 miles or one year. And it's expensive, and they spend a lot of money to make it. Same thing as Amsoil. It's more expensive, and they spend a lot of money to make it. So you can pay for what you get. It's that simple. And But you cannot be driving around in one of these fine new automobiles running some cheap, petroleum or so-called blend in a 20 weight 5w20 or 0w20 because it's not going to treat your car well over the long term in fact there was a an article by uh noria now that sounds like a funny name but they're a huge oil analysis and lubrication training company and they put out an article when the 20 weight oil started hitting the market and they said that if you use a 20 weight petroleum oil in your car that yes, it will give you better fuel economy than 30 weight. But when you pass through about 65 to 70,000 miles, it will have worn so much on your rings and you will have lost so much compression that you will now get less fuel economy for the rest of the life of the car. And they thought it was a silly thing to use 20 weight oils, especially petroleum based 20 weight oils in cars, expecting to have better fuel economy because in the long run it would balance itself out and you'd get less. So again, I'm telling you this because these cars are terrific. I mean, I've been up I went up to visit family and I've rented some different cars. These new cars are really quite amazing machines. They're really nice. And you ought to lubricate them correctly. Put the best stuff in. I think if you lubricate most of these new cars correctly, you have a 300,000-mile machine. There's 300,000 miles in that car if it's taken care of. You will not You will not wear the engine out. You will not wear the transmission out. You will get 300,000 miles out of that car easily. And we couldn't say that 25 years ago. But you can say that now. They are very well engineered, but you can ruin them by putting rot gut oil in that's not adequate for protection. So when we come back after the break, I'll talk a little bit about oil drain intervals. When should you change your oil? That ought to be an interesting discussion. And you can call me here, 407-674-1025. We'll be back right after the Welcome back to Car Time Radio. Dan Watson sitting in today for Jay Zimbauer. I've been talking about oil. I am a certified lubrication specialist. Certified by the STLE, so it's a topic that I'm familiar with and enjoy talking about. Now, I get a lot of calls after I do this show for Jay during the week, usually. And so I'll give that number out in case you want to call me here locally. It's 407-657-5966. That's 
1-800-269-9869. That's my office number. If you're outside the area, it's 800-370-2986. And also, I have a number of people who visit my web page, which is lubepage.com, just like it sounds, L-U-B-E-P-A-G-E dot com, thelubepage.com. And people will go there, look around. There's a place where you can ask some questions, and I usually get several that come in uh, asking me questions, uh, different ones on topics that had nothing to do with what I talked about on the show, but they got other questions and they never got a chance to call in here. And I'll be glad to answer those questions for you. Sometimes it takes me a day or two to get back to you, but uh, if you send in a question, you're going to get an answer. So, again, that is thelubepage.com. And I look forward to answering some of those. Now, before we went to the break, I said we'd talk about oil drains when I came back. And we will. But uh, I will be back next week, and we would probably finish up some information on that because I'm, it gets complicated with oil drains. But let me give you just a breakdown, a quick breakdown that I think works. If you're going to use a petroleum oil, then I highly recommend to you that you use one of the better petroleum oils. That, that you Just look at the name. If it's, I don't know, and I'll leave somebody out here, but uh, Valvoline, Castro, Haviline, Chevron, Texaco, Shell, and I'm sure I've left somebody out. But what I'm saying is those companies will make you a premium-grade petroleum oil. Okay? Now, if you find... Bubba's car oil or some other such stuff, okay, I highly recommend to you that you just stay away from it. You don't even know if it's what's in the bottles, what's there. So leave it alone. Stick with the name brand stuff unless you can go online, do your due diligence, and check something out, okay? Those oils today that are made properly, believe it or not, uh, do not take the hype from the lube places, because you can run them 5,000 miles, and they're going to hold up, and they're going to do well. The only time I would say that gets questionable, if you're run, if you're still running a petroleum-based oil in the 20 weight, no, you need to change it probably every 2,500 miles just to keep from messing up your engine. So now, blends. Again, I highly recommend that you stay away from blends because uh, you really don't even know what you're getting, okay? But if you run a blend... Guess what? 5,000 miles again, because there's no way with a blend of its showing or guaranteeing any further length because it probably has so little synthetic in it, it doesn't matter. Now, if you run uh, what I call a, a cheap synthetic, something that just the price is too good to be true, that's because it probably is too good to be true, and you shouldn't run that type of synthetic for more than 6,000 miles because, quite frankly, it's probably in its own way, glorified petroleum. Now, if you run a good quality synthetic, and again, who would that be? Well, that would be, again, like Valvoline Synpower, Castrol Syntec, uh, Haviline Synthetic, Shell Synthetic, uh, those kind of synthetics. You can see them on the marketplace all the time. Those companies are going to make a decent synthetic. They're not going to make something that's junk. So they're going to tell you that you can run those about 7,500 miles. That's all they warrant them for. That's it, 7,500 miles, okay? Now, if you go to, there's an Amsoil XL oil, that's our mid-grade oil, and that oil is warranted for 10,000 miles, all right? And then you go up to the top of the line, you can go to Mobile Platinum, and that Mobile Platinum is their 15,000-mile extended drain interval oil, and it's warranted for that. Or you can go to the top of the heap, which is the Amsoil Signature Series, which is warranted for 25,000 miles. Now, all of these oils also have time for their drain intervals. It's recommended. Believe it or not, the petroleum oil companies stick right on there. They're telling you that oil is good for 5,000 miles or three months. Okay, Not a lot of time, three months. The blends would tell you probably 5,000 miles or six months. And the uh, inexpensive cheap synthetic would say uh, 6,000 miles or six months. 
A good synthetic, 7,500 miles or six months. The Amsoil XL synthetic, 10,000 miles or six months. Mobile Platinum, 15,000 miles or one year. Amsoil Signature Series, 25,000 miles or one year. So there you have it for the normal type of drain intervals. And so let me just take one minute here because I can't believe people have trouble with this. If you buy a good grade petroleum oil that costs you $4 a quart and it's good for 5,000 miles and you buy an AMSOIL Signature Series oil that is good for, say, 25,000 miles, and that oil costs you $10 a quart. Well, it doesn't take a lot to figure that out, that if I, can, if I have to make virtually five oil changes at $4 a quart, that's $20. Or one oil change at $10 a quart, that's $10. I think we can figure out which oil is the least expensive to actually use. We're not talking about price. We're talking about cost over the time you use it. And so that's how you have to evaluate these oils and their oil drain intervals versus how much they cost and then whether or not they have the quality to go the distance that they claim they can go. Now, again, my website is thelubepage.com. That is T-H-E-L-U-B-E-P-A-G-E.com. A lot of info there, and you can ask me questions. My phone number in my office during the week 407-657-5969. Now, next week, when I come back, we're going to talk about how you can achieve those oil drain intervals. What is it that we do to oil or don't do to oil that makes it so we can go longer or not go as long? What goes bad? I mean, does the stuff just, something pops up, like a, a cork pops up and tells us it's bad? What, how do we know oil can go the distance it does, and why do we make those recommendations? Okay, so until next week, I'm going to just tell you to keep driving.